stars were aligned. Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Swedish jazz singer Monica Hoffman. We talked to her on May 2nd, 2020 from Sweden during the intensity of the early COVID-19 shutdown to discuss her latest 2020 CD, 10 Muses. This talented singer has Hungarian-German roots and is at home not only in classical music, but Latin, jazz, and pop. And she also speaks three languages, namely Swedish, Hungarian, and English, all of which she uses for shades of musical expression. She has a great story. Get to know her. You know, one of the functions of doing these interviews is to have musicians kind of add the voice to, you know, what's going on and what what kind of hope can be done, what can be done to help the musicians. So I guess my first question to you is, I know you have a new album out, like, it has to be bittersweet to be able to put music out for people that have some latitude to get it, but you can't do anything live. No, exactly. And it's even um, somehow di- more difficult for me since my label is in Germany. So um, they're doing amazing live streams uh, from the from Moho Music Studio. And they have like seven HD cameras and it looks so good and it sounds amazing. And I so just wish when waiting for the borders to open so that I can go over there and just do some live streams from there even though maybe there will still be some restrictions but then i can reach my i mean audience that way and they're doing an amazing job so every sunday there's a live stream that you can donate to and watch and so it's yeah so you try to find ways and also my uh, my label and also the piano player on my record uh, patrick tompert he produced one music video for every tune to record for 10 muses so we have 11 music videos so once a week i could at least promote it and show everybody what's what happened in the studio and and i'm so happy that we have that but yeah it's difficult because we have of course uh dates but not until the most dates we have is in october actually so hopefully hopefully i'm going to be able to be there but you know it, we don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> how, how long this is going to be dragged out. And of course, I mean, help is, I don't want to say it's more important, but it is more important. We need to stay healthy. Yeah, I absolutely. So what are you doing creatively to feed your creative vid kind of during this process and kind of in your survival mode? Well, I talk a lot with the musicians and I also um, um, try to... Um, I haven't been. Um, I've had. A, I've been having um, a little writer's block since my last record together with uh, Oscar Stagnar and, and Paquito de Rivera, and I'm thinking that uh, maybe this could jolt something. Like when you're really not happy in your life, that's usually when <laughs> when I write the best. So hopefully that will jolt something inside of me, so that I can write something new. But uh, that's the only way to and listen to a lot of music, enjoy other people's music as well, not just go inside my own bubble. And there's a lot of music out there right now, so you can easily access it and watch and listen to beautiful live streams. So, yeah, it's a special time. So what can the fans and those out here do to help keep the jazz artists supported, to kind of keep the artistic community afloat, so to speak, the best we can. Well, the absolute best thing is to buy everything the musicians are selling. I mean, the the albums, the merchandise, and also, of course, these live streams. They're amazing because you're you're able to donate to the musicians, and um, you can and the musicians get to reach so many other fans that they usually maybe don't in their uh, in their like circle. So for us jazz musicians, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic way to reach out. So I think uh, the fans. Not, I mean, it's also very different in jazz. Some, um, how do you say that? Um, the groups that listen to some kind of jazz, they're probably older, maybe in the other category, and they need to find themselves to go online because that's also difficult for them. I think people over maybe 70 are not always as, as comfortable with the internet. Or what do you think? How do you how do you see that? Yeah, I think there's some trepidation with that. But at the same time, they have relatives, and we're in a new world where people are weird about 
physical commodities. So I think we're going to have to learn a way, no matter how old we are, to adapt to this brand new world where it's probably going to be a little bit more ideal to get it in a way where you don't have to touch it and worry about where it's been. Yeah. You know, for yeah, me, exactly. for me personally, I love that the fact that I still get CDs in the mail um, and I still get music. That just makes me feel like things are still going. But yeah. I, I, I'm kind of a daredevil at heart, so I, I'm like, I, I love it and I'm going with it. But a lot of people are as if Americans needed a reason to be more nervous and anxious about things. Um, it's going to kick it into higher gear. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But. Well, I mean, it's not easy. I have my sister who also, I write music together with Erica Hoffman. She's in. Um, in Toronto, so she's in a in real lockdown. So we talk a lot about this, and, and she's of course really anxious. I mean, when you see they're barricading the supermarkets or the just the, the malls, have they done that there uh, where you are as well? Barricading and putting up huge walls in front of the windows so people won't break in. No. Have they done that? Uh uh-uh. uh. No, they've done that in Toronto. And wow. Sent me pictures, and I'm like, why? Are they doing that? Just scaring people. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. But maybe some would break in. I don't know. Sure. It's not the apocalypse, but but they're making it really scary. I would be scared too. So I understand her being anxious when I talk to her. Yeah, it's it, it's it's strange, and I think every place on the planet right now is going through their own level of like, you know, fear tactics and coping and all of that, and you know, we are. Uh, I think it's more here of like each week we evolve to a point where we wear masks or gloves or we the only certain amount of people can go into places and there's long lines and there's a lot of things that are going to probably become more normalized until this is totally yeah. under control yeah. or we get a vaccine. Yeah, so, um, but and also creatively, it's it's good. You asked about the creativity before what I do to to keep it maintained or I don't know what you said. No, no, sorry, my English. No, no, you're fine. Uh, to keep it going. Uh, I, you know, I, I, uh, I'm a singer, of course, but I started playing the violin when I was three years old and I haven't touched it in a while. So I started playing again and also the saxophone, but that really, that's really difficult for me because playing five minutes on the saxophone, it hurts the mouth so bad, but I really want to get back to it. So it gave me time to just find old passions that I had before and it's also it helps the creativity that way I think just to reignite some things yeah absolutely and so, also learning new things if it's possible and not focusing exactly what you were talking not focusing on the scary parts just trying to stay in contact with your family talk to them as much as you can even if you can't meet them I'm I'm lucky that I can meet my mom but I can't hug her at all so I'm really sitting at a distance from her and we're a really touchy-feely family if I may and, and it's just it's difficult yeah. and if she's there in front of me it's it's just not the same and, and some, in the beginning I, I was always wanted to go to hug her and she was smart she was like no 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 don't and I'm like oh shoot Man, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not. It's just really, it, it was difficult, and it is difficult. Yeah, yep, yeah, I get it. So, when we do eventually get back to live music, what do you hope yeah. both the the crowd and the musicians realize from this absence of live music? The the, the crowd that they can't that they can't take it for granted because right now the musicians are really suffering. Uh, I'm saying the musicians, I'm a musician myself, I'm lucky enough to have a teaching, a vocal teaching job. I do not know what I would have done without it, honestly. I see my fellow musicians just struggling and it's, it's very difficult and, and it hurts to see. And I see everyday um, friends posting on Facebook Good. looking for, for jobs and it's it's sad uh, but at the same time they will survive this is also uh, a period that will pass and they'll get stronger i'm sure for it but but it's uh, it's not easy when you have a family and maybe both parents are musicians i mean it's not easy but yes do not take the musicians for granted and uh, i i think 
the public loves music and they listen to it every day and they have that on Spotify, they have it on CD, so be out there supporting uh, afterwards as well. So, I guess we've been kind of focusing on what's going on with the pandemic, so I just kind of, I got one more question for you and it's more centric to who you are. Everyone has a perception of you. Everyone has their version of who they think you are. Your family, your friends, and your fans. But you're living your life. Who do you think you are? <laughs> That's an easy question. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a loving and curious person. And I love meeting people and cultures. And that's also why music has taken me to so many different places and a different kind of uh, styles as well. I started out with the classical music, with my violin, and, and then into uh, jazz with the saxophone and the piano and my mother singing for me and playing French horn and, and, and dancing. And I'm, I'm, I'm just a very curious person. And um, so loving and curious, I don't know if that's something. <laughs> yeah, me. no, that. <laughs> No, that's great. That's okay. along with what you're doing during the quarantine. Are there any other projects that you're involved with? Well, actually, I have a wonderful friend in Pittsburgh whom I met uh, at Berkeley College of Music. Her name is uh, Melinda Calaisi, and she has a wonderful. She's the CEO of Women Who Rock, and they support the Mookie Women's Research Institute and Foundation. And they just started up something called Moms Rock, the Moms Rock Challenge, and it's for in the honor of Mother's Day. So I'm doing an interview with her next week, but so the challenge is that you sing uh, something for your mom, mom and it, you don't have to be a musician or anything, you just say, play, and you um, put it up on Instagram or um, on Facebook, and I've seen so many, and it started actually today, so that's kind of nice as well. And there's so many fantastic challenges online that people just keep their um, spirits up and we should do that, all of us. So it's the Women Who Rock Challenge. Monica, thank you for taking a minute out during this very strange time on our planet. Thank you very much. Very nice talking to you, Joe. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest singers in Sweden, Germany, America, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Monica for her time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.